Dear colleagues and dear friends, today I want to introduce you the gravity assist problem. It is a space maneuver involving both a spacecraft and a planet. And we want to study an interplanetary mission starting from the Earth, reaching Mars by using a planet in between, the Assis planet, let's say in this case Venus. And uh, we will check if this trajectory is more convenient versus a direct flight from the Earth to Mars in terms of fuel or in terms of time. Let's start. We will start now with some theory. What is the physical principle behind? Whenever a spacecraft approaches a planet from outside its sphere of influence, it escapes the elliptical orbit and enters an hyperbolic one. But because it is hyperbolic, it can never enter in any orbit around the planet. So it will either crash against the planet or leave it. However, the leaving direction is different from the entry one because the trajectory is deviated of a certain angle phi, this angle. Let's see now how to determine it. Here are the relevant formulas. The given parameters are two, the V infinite, the velocity entering the sphere of influence, theoretically at infinite distance from the planet where its gravity is not taking effect, and the radius of the periapsis Rp, the minimum distance of the hyperbolic orbit to the center of the planet. Actually, we can use this value indirectly by targeting a planet with a defined impact parameter b. We remember the impact parameter is the distance between the asymptote of the hyperbolic orbit and the center of the planet. The remaining parameters defining the hyperbolic orbit can be found here. So the a, the major semi-axis, the e, the eccentricity, b, its impact parameter, and then the angle a infinite and phi infinite. Phi infinite is the most important parameter for us, which is defining the deviation angle. By combining the formulas, we come to an expression of the deviation angle as a function of the two known parameters, v infinite and rp. And we observe that the deviation is higher the less is the velocity and the less is the distance from the planet, the rp, and the more is the mass of the planet by means of the gravity constant m. And we observe, moreover, that the modulus of the velocity, v infinite, stays constant, but the absolute velocity not. It changes from v1 to v2. Let's calculate how it changes as a vector. By using the cosine theorem between the, ve the velocities v1, the absolute entry, vp, the velocity of the planet, and vr, the relative one, we can calculate the angle epsilon. Now we can apply a second time the same theorem between v2, the absolute leaving velocity, also vp, the planet velocity, and vr, and we find v2 as modulus. About the angle delta 2, the angle between V2 and Vp, we need to utilize the sin theorem. Finally, the delta Vr is given by this relation, and this is actually the modulus of the delta V absolute also. What is the conclusion? The gravity assist plays a similar role as a burning maneuver. It increases the mechanical energy of a spacecraft, and we can use it for changing the speed, either accelerating or decelerating. How it is possible? The kinetic energy of the probe is actually 1 against the planet, but since the mass of the planet is so big, practically no influence on the second one. If we need to accelerate, then the probe must encounter the planet behind it in the direction of the planet's speed, opposite way if the probe must break. On the right side, there is a chart, a vector chart, for demonstration of the second case, why the speed actually decreases. Now we make a step forward. There is further the possibility to use a barn when the probe approaches the periapsis here. In this case also, the modulus of Vr changes. Let's see how to calculate the leaving velocity V2. We want to determine now the leaving Vr. We call it V infinite 2. 
this velocity here by knowing the entry velocity, the infinite one. The velocity of the periapsis close to the planet is given by this expression, the infinite square plus the escape square. The escape velocity is given by this formula, where mi is the one of the planet. Then we apply the barn, so our speed increases by delta v, and we call this new speed vp star. Now, the leaving velocity, v infinite 2, given by vp star square minus escape velocity square. The same expression used above, but solved for v infinite 2. We still need the new angle phi infinite. This angle is the mean between the entry and the leaving phi1 and phi2. We know already the expression to find it, so we apply the same formula seen before for the second angle by inputting this time the new value, the v infinite 2. By means of the leaving v infinite, we can calculate now the absolute velocity, which is our target. For the modulus, we use the cosine theorem as for the unpowered flyby. The angle epsilon does not change. The new parameters phi and v are star we found right away. Same history for the angle delta 2 star. Always the sin theorem, but with the three new entries. Phi infinite, v r star calculated in the previous slide, and v2 star found right above. As we can see, from the vector chart, the relative velocity is also changing, and uh, the absolute velocity is changing even more. The result is that the kinetic energy gained by the probe with the powered flyby is more than the one simply given by the barn. Let's see an example now how to fly to Mars using the assist of Venus. Starting from the Earth, we enter an elliptical orbit targeting Venus, and from Venus, the probe is shifted to a second elliptical orbit targeting Mars. What is happening at Venus is represented here. The entry velocity v1 changes into v2 after encountering the planet and also the angle. The difficult task is to find a way so that the new velocity and the new angle is matching with the orbit that we need. Let's see in the coming slides how to get it. The study of the orbit is not part of this presentation. Let's assume it's made by somebody else. And from this study, we know the uh, departure and arrival times. The departure from the Earth will be on 14 of uh, September 2023, the flyby at Venus on 20th February 2024, and the arrival at Mars 16th of July 2024. And here we have also a table with some reference parameters corresponding to the dates above, the position of the Earth in terms of radius and theta, the starting position of the Earth here, and the arrival position at Venus, and also we know the uh, geometrical parameters of the transfer orbit A, the one represented in blue, the major semi-axis A, the eccentricity E, and the argument of the periapsis theta zero. Once the trajectory is known, also the velocities are. We need the ones in proximity of Venus now and we'll use always the same formula by changing r and a. Mi is the one of the sun. The absolute velocity is calculated for r at Venus approach and for a at the elliptical transfer. The draft speed is calculated for the same r, but a is for the Venus orbit around the sun. And uh, the relative speed is the difference as vector among the first two. For calculation, we need also the angle, equals this expression function of the parameters a, e, and r. So all are known. And eventually we found the velocity 11,000 meter per second, more or less. Now we make the same study for the second orbit from Venus to Mars. The radius and the angle of the starting and leaving position we need to read from the table. The starting position is this one, and the arriving position is this one. As well, we know the parameters of the transfer orbit B. Repeating exactly the same steps as for the orbit A, 
we get the new relative speed at Venus after leaving the flyby. We observe that the angle is changed, but the modulus not much. We represent here in this vector chart the velocities found. V in red is the velocity of Venus around the Sun, the draft speed. U is the absolute entry speed. U1, the leaving absolute speed, and also the angles are known. How to choose the flyby parameters? The periapsis radius RP and the speed change at the periapsis delta V. Actually, this second parameter is not needed because the two relative speeds are practically the same. The phi infinite we can determine graphically is the angle beta, 21.8 degrees. V infinite we have calculated before in the previous slide, and therefore by inverting this formula we can find the value of RP. The RP is the uh, radius of the periapsis, subtracting the radius of the planet, we get the elevation, 5,261 kilometers. Let's complete now the mission. We have five steps, the Earth parking, the launch to Venus, the flyby at Venus, the Mars approach, and the Mars parking. We have seen till now only the step number three. Now we need to complete the other steps. For the parking circular orbit around the Earth, we assume a quote of 300 km. Therefore, the Vc, the circular speed, is calculated by means of this formula. But to leave the sphere of influence of the Earth, we need an hyperbolic transfer. And the required speed Vh is uh, calculated by means of this formula, where the first part under the root is the escape velocity, and the second one is the relative speed of the elliptical transfer orbit. And finally, we get this value for the hyperbolic speed. Subtracting the circular orbit, we get the delta V, which we need to apply in this position in order to enter the heliocentric elliptical orbit towards Venus. Similar procedure for steps 4 and 5. We choose the parking orbit at Mars of 1000 km. The circular orbit speed is therefore calculated and the hyperbolic speed as well as for the Earth using the V infinite given by the arrival point of the transfer orbit B. This is the relative speed we need to introduce at this part of the formula. And the first part is the escape velocity at Mars. Once VH is calculated, subtracting VH from VC, we get the delta V. That is negative because our probe needs to decelerate. There is a braking maneuver. The sum of the two delta Vs, the one found in the previous slide and this one, gives the total delta V of the mission 8875 meter per second and also we know the transfer time 306 days if we want to compare this journey with a conventional one and not gravity assisted trajectory in other words what would we take just to avoid any confusion here we cannot travel directly to mars because close to september 2023 there are no launching windows we remember that only every 26 months a direct flight is possible and of course this would be quicker and less expensive the only alternative we have is a bi-elliptic transfer and the closest one is uh, happening on 22nd july 2023 the closest to our trip i would say and arrives on the 29th of june of the uh, following year the table of the position of the probe at the launch change and arrival are also displayed here and the important to notice that uh, here we are not encountering any planet nor venus nor any other one the intermediate radius of the bi-elliptic trajectory is chosen to have more or less similar transfer time as for the jar they already found you can see that our uh, probe is traveling along two elliptical trajectories parallel each other and uh, tangent. 
on top there are the geometrical data of the two transfer ellipses. The parameters are for the orbit A and for the orbit B, respectively. A, the major semi-axis, is the eccentricity and the transfer time T. By repeating the delta V analysis done for the gravity assisted travel, we come to a total delta V as a result of three steps. This first Earth launch, the orbit change happening in this position, and the Mars parking in this position. And we come to a total delta V of 9704 meters per second. As well, we know the transfer time, the sum of the two transfer orbits displayed above. And this is uh, compared with the previous journey, 829 meters per second more delta V and uh, 42 days longer travel. The last and most important question we need to answer is, do we save fuel and how much? We would assume a probe of 500 kilograms as a payload. And then we divide the journey in three steps. If you need more details about this load analysis, you need to switch to some previous videos like Mission to Mars or Ganymede Flyby, where this topic is deepened. The stage three is the payload and from the rocket equation and uh, giving the corresponding loads including the shell and the fuel at every stage we come to a mass at low earth orbit of 8.8 .8 tons by including the launch vehicle we get a total mass of 169 tons and the fuel among it is 156 tons as sum of this uh, column. If you compare with the bi-elliptic transfer, this will be 14 tons less. So eventually we save fuel, something about 10%. Should be the probe heavier, the difference grows proportionally. Maybe is much, maybe not. Important is that this is actually for free and uh, depends upon the launch window. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but uh, it's worthy to be taken. I hope you have enjoyed. As usual, I leave you a link to a bibliographic content. There is a master thesis of a student. Uh, you can download it for free and um, it contains more or less uh, the topics we have spoken together. And there is also a program code that you can implement for the numerical solution of the gravity assist problem. See you again.